It is 10 a.m. and I'm taking both these devices. They're fully charged off their chargers. <sighs> Good morning. Today I'm wearing the Apple Watch Ultra and the Google Pixel Watch in New York City. Can these withstand all the activities I need to do? And how's the battery life today? Let's head outside. Google, turn off the living room light. Siri, turn off the living room light. Understood. Understood. Request. Request sent. One thing I do love about both devices is this has Google Home support, this has Apple Home support, and using my voice to be able to control the lights, the locks, any kind of smart home devices in my home is great. What do you think of the Pixel? I think it looks cool. It looks cool? I think it looks like Always the first thing in the day is you need to get your morning coffee, and I still haven't gotten that, so we're gonna navigate to this place, Terramoto Coffee, which is really nice in Chelsea, near the Google office building. Google, navigate to Terramoto Coffee. Oh, it looks, on, it looks like on the Google Pixel Watch, you can't get transit directions. What's really neat is I got Google Maps on here. It looks like I can't scroll around on the map. Siri, navigate to Terramoto Coffee. On the Apple Watch, luckily, you can get transit directions. It's gonna show me which bus and train to take, as well as how much it's gonna cost and how long it's gonna take for the bus or train to arrive. What I love about the Apple Watch, though, is it does have a map where I can scroll, I can zoom in, and I can really understand where exactly we need to go. 36 minutes walking or about 25 minutes via transit. We're gonna use transit to test out the payment features on these devices. All right, let's see. Oh, it's not accepted, let's try it again. All right, I got my card activated. All right, it works. So now I'm gonna do the Apple Watch. I don't need to tap any buttons. I can literally just take my watch. I'm good to go, we're green. I'll see you later. What's really interesting though is on the Pixel Watch, I gotta double tap the crown and then I get the wallet and then I can scan, whereas the Apple Watch, I literally just scan and go. I don't have to even look at it or press any buttons. You can't actually get transit directions on the Google Pixel Watch. Even if I start it on here, it'll show me where to go on the phone, but it's not gonna show the directions in the maps on my watch. Whereas on the Maps app on the Apple Watch, I'm gonna get the same exact transit directions that I started on my phone. In terms of walking, cycling, and driving, I am able to get those directions on the Google Pixel Watch. I just can't get transit and I absolutely need the phone. These are the transit directions on Apple Maps on the iPhone phone, transit directions on Google Maps on the Google Pixel. If I really wanted to, I could even pull up Google Maps on my iPhone as well. There are no Apple Maps on the Google Pixel. The only difference I would say is the pay your fare with Google Pay, whereas here it doesn't show that I can pay with Apple Pay. There's an exit of the train at 14th Street. Looks like this is our stop if we look at the map here. It's gonna take a second to update, but we are here, this is it. The Pixel Watch doesn't show anything. So one thing that Apple Maps doesn't do is it just says exit and then walk over there. Whereas Google Maps right here, it says exit via 8th Ave in the 16th Street Southwest corner. See right here, this is the 16th Street Southwest corner. This is the Northwest corner. So we gotta go this way. Thank you, Google. Battery update, it's been about an hour and 23 minutes. The Google Pixel Watch is at 96%, whereas the Apple Watch is at 100% still. Oh shoot, is that an ATM? I'm pretty sure the coffee shop might be cash only, so let's just go get cash just in case. There we go. And just like that, I pulled out $20 with my watch on my wrist. Can the Pixel Watch do the same? So I did load my debit card on here. Tap awkwardly. <gasps> it worked, it worked. It shows a little blue check mark, meaning it worked. It's gonna ask for a pin. It's one, two, three, four. Let's go for 20. It does look like I can withdraw cash with the Pixel Watch. That's freaking cool. But seriously, who uses cash these days? Come on. We want the government to know everything we spend money on, so use your credit card. One thing I have noticed is the Google Pixel Watch is not as bright in direct sunlight, whereas the Apple Watch here is just extremely bright in these settings, and it's super easy to see what I need to see. So in the last video, people got mad at me for turning off my phone, but this time I'm carrying both phones. Google, thank you for sending me this for free. In the afternoon, I'll turn both of them off, so that way we're using LTE and cellular only to see how much faster the battery drains. I'm wearing jackets, so one thing I've noticed is the sleeves keep going over my watches, so if I want to see the time and stuff, just keeps covering the lot. We are here, we have arrived at Terramento Coffee. Let's head on inside. Get my cold brew, because I've been craving this stuff so much. I'm gonna go inside and test the Apple Pay on here and the Google Pay on here and see if it works. I would assume they both use the same technology and it should all work on the same terminal. Can I get a cold brew, all black, please? Can I use Apple Pay? Tap is literally up here. Do you want me to pay for you? <laughs> we gotta use the other device to see if this works. Mm. So supposedly this cold brew is like 220-ish milligrams of caffeine. What time is it now? It is, uh, this one says 12.15 and this one says 12.15. What's your review on this coffee? I love this coffee. The other thing I love is they have the best ice out of any of the cold brews ever. It's the chewable ice, so once I finish the coffee, I'll chew on all the ice until I finish that. All right, now we're gonna head to the Apple and Google store to have a little bit of fun with these watches. Because here in New York, there's an area called Chelsea and there's an Apple store and a Google store literally right next to each other. The Google store, and if you look right over here, that right there is the Apple store. So it's perfect to go mess with them a little bit. How's it going? Good, how about you? 
I just switched to the Pixel and my iMessage isn't working. Do you guys sell AirPods? Uh, no. No. I was wondering what I could do. I got stood up on a date because my bubbles turned green. So Wait, what, what can I do? What? And does it work with the watch pretty well? Yeah. Yeah? Can I buy it? Wait, what's your question? I just switched to the Pixel and okay. my iMessage isn't working anymore. So iMessage is iPhone to iPhone. That's so I have to be iPhone only? Correct. So I got to get rid of this? Okay, cool. Thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> Can I pay with my watch? Of course. I can use Google Pay? Yes. Apple Pay? Of course. Is it a sin if I use my Apple Watch to pay? <laughs> of course not. All right, we got a Pixel Buds and a strap. This will be exciting. We're gonna test these out. How does it actually work by streaming music via the watch versus the Apple Watch and AirPods? So I can tell you kind of what the audio quality is like and as well as streaming music on LTE on both watches. So that'll be interesting. But first, we need to grab lunch with my friend. He does work at Google. We can't tell you who he is, what he looks like. So this is all secret. His name is definitely Sundar. So there is Sundar right there. He actually let us into this. He asked not to be on camera. <laughs> Charles, thanks for having us at lunch. What are your impressions of the Pixel watch? I mean, the phone. Like, it's actually pretty cool. But it's got green bubbles, so I'll never get it. Mm -hmm. Would you talk to me if I had green bubbles? Battery update, it's been about five hours and the Google Pixel Watch is at 75% and the Apple Watch Ultra is at 89%. Here we've got the Apple Pixel Buds and the Google AirPods. These are brand new and I'm gonna try to connect to the Pixel Watch without even using my Pixel phone. They look really nice, really white case, right side, left side, wow. No, oh, the noise has been canceled, I can't hear anything. Google Pixel Watch, open up Spotify and try to connect to these headphones. So the Pixel Buds do work with the Pixel Watch. The only issue is that for some reason the Spotify app is not working on the Pixel Watch. Maybe that's, I don't know, the Spotify app wasn't working on the Apple Watch either, but they did release an update where it is now. But I keep trying to play music and it's like being really buggy. So I think the big test will be, I'll have to turn off all my phones and see how it works. But we do know that if I put these AirPods on and I can go on my Apple Watch and play the most popular song on my music, It'll go ahead and automatically play. It's, yeah, it's playing directly into my AirPods. Like, it was just that easy. It just works. So that's one of the upsides I like about the Apple ecosystem is most of the time, it just works. All right, in terms of cases, obviously the AirPods Pro is much more to play with. It's just the hinge feels higher quality. The, AirPod, the Google Pods, whatever you want to call them, they feel like plasticky. In terms of a little headset device, the Google one is definitely smaller as far as you have the stem and stuff. In terms of audio quality, the Google ones seem like they have more bass, whereas the AirPods just feel more clear, I would say. Now that I switched out the bands, there is one thing that's interesting. This is really easy to put on and take off. It feels more comfortable, but it is very malleable. So if I'm trying to press a button here, right, the watch just moves a lot more. Maybe I could have gotten a tighter one, but it's just, it doesn't stay as firm in its place when I'm pushing this button or pushing this button, right? The watch is moving when I'm trying to, you really gotta make sure you have your finger on the other side and then you push the button and then you push the button or else the watch just moves. I like having that experience of, you know, I just push, push. I can use one hand. I don't need to have fingers on both sides. One of the most important features that I love about my smartwatch is the calendar feature. And both watches have a calendar as I can see here. We were supposed to get lunch today at 12, 1 p.m. And it was in my calendar with the address and I can just tap the event and I can actually tap the directions and it automatically opens up maps and gets me there. Same thing with the Google Pixel watch. I can open up my watch. I can see the events that I have in my calendar. Uh, it shows the location, the name, the guests, and what the information is all about. The only downside it looks like here is when I tap the address, it doesn't open up Google Maps. So we won't know how to get there unless we have our phone. It's 3.45, almost six hours since we took them off the charger. The Apple Watch Ultra is at 87%. The Google Pixel Watch is at 65%. But now I want to increase the stress test. So I'm going to turn both of these devices off. Both of the watches will go switch the cellular. We'll do some more testing on the things that I was already doing today, as well as try some new things and see if they work. How much longer can these batteries last when they're purely on cellular LTE? Sherman's AirPods Pro. Pair the AirPods to the Pixel Watch. Oh, okay, so these are the AirPods Pro connected to the Pixel Watch. This is like the ultimate sin. Google and Apple products working together. I don't know if this is legal. If I get arrested, okay, bail me out. It's playing Kygo through the AirPods Pro. I guess they're Bluetooth headphones, so technically they work with anything, but I think the ecosystem of easily switching from hardware device to hardware device might be a little more complicated. But I'm streaming Spotify through LTE on the Pixel Watch via Google Fi into my Apple AirPods Pro, and I think the world just fell apart. 
Bam, 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 bam. Last time we did this test, I said that you can't use your Apple Watch to get a city bike, but honestly, we didn't really try because I remember there's a terminal right here, so we're gonna try it right now. I can buy a pass or get a bike. Looks like all I need to do is scan this, so let's try Google Pay. Looks like we just scan. I got the check mark, but all right, let's try Apple Pay again. All right, the green lights went, this is done. Theoretically, it says here that it would work. You know, I just get a code, I get a bike, and I get going, and I can use a contactless or inside a credit card here, but it's not getting past the payment screen. They don't want to take my money. Maybe this station doesn't work. City bike was an epic fail, and I saw the desire to spend some money, so we are here at Lulu Orange, and I'm gonna buy a new pair of shorts. Fun fact, if you wanna use Google Apple Pay, you don't need internet connection, you don't need your phone. So even if cellular is off, you can still use Apple Pay to make purchases. It's like a physical credit card, right? Their device is connected to the internet, not your credit card. So that's a fun fact that most people actually don't know. So let's go spend some money. Just that are similar or anything fast and free? The thing is, I don't know Do like if I would get too hot. Today? Your expert opinion says yes. All right, we're doing a little experiment where we're using Google and Apple Pay. Which one should I use to make this purchase? Most people do Apple Pay. Oh, so no Google Pay? So I should be different. I'm gonna be different and use Google Pay? All right, here we go, Google Pay. Let's see if it works. Oh, it just says right here, Android. Let me just awkwardly put my wrist there. Thank you so much, have a good one. Purchase complete, let's put this on. Boom, shirt is on. Let's go for a walk and listen to some music while we stream on cellular. Now before we do the walk with music, I do need to send some messages and make a couple phone calls. So we're gonna test that out on both the Apple Watch and the Google Pixel. And I know there's two ways to send messages on the Apple Watch. It's using Siri with my voice or I can type swipe on the keyboard. So I see that Charles Kerr sent me a message. I can double tap even to give a little reply. And then if I wanna to reply to his message, I can go ahead and tap iMessage and I've got this full keyboard. I can start to swipe on it or I tap the voice transcription and be like, hey, Awesome, sounds good, look forward to seeing you soon. Sent from Apple Watch. Now on the Google Pixel, same thing. I can go ahead and say, Google, send a message to Tejas. I hope you're doing well, you're the best. This is sent from the Google Pixel Watch. This is Shervin. Ready to send it? Yes. So now it's sending the message. Oh, not sent. Check Wi-Fi and mobile data, what? So when I check it here, I do have data. I don't know what's wrong. There's no double tap to reply on the Google Messages app, but they make it super easy to send emojis. And now it says your phone is currently offline, so I guess because the phone is off, I can't send messages. That's really weird. Call Tejas. Go follow him on TikTok. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, who's this? This is Shervin. I'm calling from the Google Pixel Watch, and my Pixel 7 Pro is also off. How's the audio quality? It sounds pretty good. I it's... can't tell the difference from anything else. It sounds like you're talking into the phone. Wow, that's that's awesome. It sounds a little, it's popping on my end, which is really weird. It's like, well, let me call you back on my Apple Watch, and let's see if it sounds different. Siri, call Tejas Huller. All right, so we got three bars here. As you can see, it's calling his iPhone. How we doing? Wow, the speaker on the Apple Watch Ultra is way louder. Like, I wouldn't be able to tell that you're speaking to me from a watch right now. It sounds basically the same as the Google Pixel. Okay, so the Apple Watch Ultra and the Google Pixel sound the same from your end, but from my end, the, pi the Ultra is way louder. Like, I can actually understand what you're saying. I appreciate you for picking up my phone call. Absolutely, man. Now, ideally, when you're doing a phone call, you don't want to be walking around talking like this for a long time. So what I would do is I would grab my AirPods or Pixel Buds and put these in and connect it to the watch, and then it feels like you're on a normal call because you got your headphones in, it's Bluetooth to the watch, and cellular shooting through. Battery update. So we are at 75% battery remaining right now, 522. So it's been about two hours almost since I turned off my iPhone and the battery has started to degrade much faster. Connected to cellular on Verizon. Uh, it shows you how much data I've been using in each app. Pixel watch, <laughs> 22,000 steps. Heart rate is at 78. We are at 42% battery. So the battery has been draining increasingly faster since it's been on cellular. So for our walk, we're gonna do about a 40 minute walk back to my house. Uh, I'm going to start navigation on both devices, walking directions. I'm going to stream music through the headphones and I'm going to track an activity so it's capturing my heart rate the entire time as well as GPS location. So let's get those started. Navigate home via walking directions. Google, navigate home via walking directions. Uh, it keeps giving me an error so maybe we won't do navigation. Find Spotify. We're going to put in my headphones. I got. I got navigation directions on my Apple Watch, so that will be helpful right there. Put one Pixel Bud in one ear and an AirPod in the other ear. <laughs> I'm gonna start streaming Spotify from the Pixel Watch. Got two different songs in each ear. Now we're gonna start a workout. Okay, so we're gonna start a walk here. I'm gonna go to Fitbit exercise, walk, and now it's gonna start to find the GPS connection here. On the Apple Watch, we're gonna hit the action button 
This is outdoor walk. We're going to hit outdoor walk. They're both looking for GPS. GPS connected on both devices. I hit play here. It's going to start right there. I'm going to hit play here. We started the workout. And those are the two workout screens. So the time elapsed is showing, the distance, my heart rate, and the number of steps shows on the, on the uh, Pixel Watch, which is cool. I can end pause here, and I can see all this information here as well. On the Apple Watch, you just kind of scroll through, and you can see that information. And I also have the ability to control my music right here, as well as end my workout. So let's start walking. One thing that's really interesting, Strava integration. The Pixel Watch will actually upload my walks and runs automatically to Strava via cellular, and I don't have to worry about syncing it with my phone. Whereas the Apple Watch Ultra, you have to sync it with your phone and then manually import it. Google Maps does not work on the Pixel Watch unless your phone is on, which is really weird. I can't use cellular to get navigations on the Pixel Watch. It's frustrating. I am back home from the walk, and that took about 35, 40-ish minutes. And if we look at the Apple Watch Ultra, it is at 56%. It has connected to the Wi-Fi in my home. So I'm gonna charge the Pixel Watch. I'm gonna keep wearing my Apple Watch Ultra throughout the day. I'll sleep with it, and we'll have an update tomorrow after I wake up. Good night. There is my sleep. The Google Pixel gives you like a score through the Fitbit app. Apple just kind of gives you your sleep time as well as sleep stages. But if you look at the sleep times, they're about 30 minutes off almost, maybe 25 minutes. And honestly, I don't know which one to trust. So I just look at that data, it's interesting, but I would not rely on it. Overall, the Google Pixel Watch is a decent start for a first gen watch. It has adequate fitness and sleep tracking, it tells you the time, and it's a beautiful minimalistic design. Unfortunately, the battery just can't hang with the Ultra. It's lacking in maps and cellular features. But on the other hand, the Apple Watch is still the reigning king of smartwatches. But Garmin here might have a chance to take them down. Turn on your notifications to see that video. Whew.